Dignitaries on the desk, distinguished engineers, academicians, my brothers and sisters from the student community, friends from the media, good morning to all of you. A very happy new year to all of you. Those who have come from different parts of the globe on behalf of the government of Andhra Pradesh, I extend a very warm welcome to this historic city of Hyderabad, which Dr. Naidu has uh, Dr. Rao has so beautifully described about this city. As we are all aware, civil engineering is the one which laid foundations for all civilizations. It is civil engineering which provides structural stability for a variety of systems and subsystems to perform their functions in an efficient manner. That's what when he was talking about whether it is Brahma, whether it is Vishnu, whether it is Shiva, this is the performance. Different roles will have to be performed by different functionaries and different structures. This is what civil engineering enables you. We must remember the modern world is a maze of socio-political systems, subsystems, groups, subgroups with very intricate relationships driven by you must remember this. Very so 700 crore people in the world by resources actually for all these growing billions of people. The more important thing is increasing human greed and almost unsustainable lifestyles. Earlier, the needs were simple, the desires were simple, but our needs are increasing, our greed is increasing. What our distinguished friend from abroad, he mentioned that we are destroying our mother earth. We are living as if we had another planet to go. Okay. At a later date, our... Every second person starts owning a car, as it happens in the prosperous societies. Already some families are having three to four cars. Imagine the kind of traffic congestion that's going to take place. In fact, we are sitting on a powder keg. Okay? I don't know. I'm really scared actually to imagine the urban areas of India as well as other countries. In fact, the world is paying a heavy price for using car as a just very common item. Actually, car is a luxury item. We must remember that people shall use public transportation and not cars. Cars are meant for certain things, for certain luxuries as well. Use it for a social occasion, etc. That's what our gentleman is talking about. So there are a number of things, the way the, the, the greed is increasing, the way the energy consumption, everything puts tremendous stress on our natural resources, the capabilities of people to tackle these things. So here we must also remember Okay, the most important element, the political element, democracy. Democracy is no doubt the best form of governance so far evolved by humans. No other form is better than democracy. I'm fully convinced about it. But democracy also means electoral politics. All of you are seeing day in and day out. Forget about developing countries like ours. Even in the developed countries, the politicians, the political leaders who are the ultimate policy makers, you and I are not the policy makers. I may be assisting the government, but the policy makers are the political leaders, the elected representatives of the people. Their priorities are different. Okay? As the chief executives of companies today, they are bothered about quarterly results. Okay? All of you must be seeing the quarterly results. He is not bothered about the long term vision, long term goal. Okay? He has to perform every quarter. Same is the case with our political leaders, he has to be seen to be performing okay, by the majority of the voters. So his priority is not infrastructure development, which is long-term requirement for any country, for any nation to progress. Okay. A political leader would like to spend more time. The, we must remember that the resources are limited. Okay. There are competing demands on the resources, actually. Okay. 
limited resources he would like to spend on more on freebies what you see day in and day out so here lies the challenge for civil engineers actually in this kind of a very difficult very tough environment how do we deliver okay how do we conceive projects conceiving project okay a project will have to be a financially viable project economically good project okay it's very easy actually to conceive mega projects but mega projects actually you don't have the kind of resources that are required mckinsey for example estimated for the average growth rate today the global economies are growing on average about 3 to 3 and a half percent for a 3 to 3 and a half percent growth rate you require from the present period of say end of 2013 to 2030 in this 17 year period you require 60 trillion dollars a trillion dollar is how much anybody 62 lakh crore rupees in indian rupees a trillion dollar is equivalent to 62 lakh crore rupees where do we get this kind of resources world doesn't have this kind of resources less than half of this kind of money is available for different nations and even that less than half the financial resources are frittered away more on freebies okay this is the real challenge actually so you have to perceive and you have to conceive projects which are economically the most okay inspiring projects actually see the project that gives you the best yield that is the most important thing so to conceive this kind of a thing we must also remember that project formulation is not a simple civil engineering function even though civil engineering plays a very important role you have to understand that it's an interdisciplinary approach the most important thing which normally the engineering colleges engineering academicians tend to neglect is the role of social sciences okay sociology political science economics finance management behavioral sciences and the fellow all other engineering disciplines actually see all these things for example so when i'm talking about hyderabad metro rail project i'll explain the kind of complications we have in a few minutes from now actually how many disciplines interact into this particular project actually you will understand so we have to understand that interdisciplinary approach is the most important thing and we must have more than anything else actually see unless and until you have an open mind i keep quoting this open mind is the most important thing i have come from finance to engineering projects for the last 30 years i have been interacting with engineers day in and day, day out and i have been implementing projects actually see when i talk to engineers actually see certain new ideas actually see, then we completely come up with a different things at the moment i start introducing other than if it's a civil engineering project i deliberately introduce people from other disciplines okay then it gives it opens up a lot of new ideas we keep come some of the ideas which i will talk to you during the course of this uh, speech okay so most important thing is actually you have to have an open mind don't go by the structured minds no doubt you must learn okay the good theoretical knowledge the good theoretical and the good practical experience that your professors will teach but please keep your mind open okay start questioning everything the problem with indian education system is that actually see ours is more of an intellectual taxidermy actually people put lots of ideas into your mind actually they think that it is no. you must keep your mind open you must keep questioning everything actually so that you will be able to properly arrive at your own decisions that's how we have number of IITs, we have number of these things, etc. But we are not able to produce Nobel laureates in this country because our education system needs to be changed. Anyway.